What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Stronger TV. I'm Kiefer Lamy here with Dan Pope, and today we're talking about tempo training. So we talked about this in our earlier episode when we used the whiteboard and we talked about how, you know, we use tempos to adjust training in a variety of ways, but I don't think we we did a good enough job kind of hammering home the points or going into detail about how we actually do that. Yeah. Right? So in our training, we use tempos a lot. I use it as a coach, as a way to almost get my athletes to do a certain thing without having to stand next to them to coach it, but we'll also use it to build more tension in positions or to help somebody, you know, rehab back from an injury or improve the way that they're moving. Yeah. So the three basic portions of the muscle action that we're going to talk about is the, the eccentric portion, which is the negative or in a squats case, you know, the lowering portion, right? The isometric portion, which would just be holding a position. Okay. And then the concentric portion, which is kind of the positive portion of the lift or, you know, using a squat as an example, the way back up. Yeah. Right? So Can I think, show you? yeah, let's go through a couple of them. All right. Got okay. So as Dan goes through a squat, right? The eccentric portion is just him going on the way down, right? Good. The isometric portion would be if we told Dan to stay right here, this would be an isometric portion of the muscle action. So he's holding that position. And then the concentric is going to be the way back up, right? So in normal training, kind of a tempo you'd see a lot is, you know, maybe two seconds on the way back down, uh, no hold at the bottom, or, you know, maybe a one second hold, and then kind of faster or one second motion on the way back up, right? Yeah. But what we do a lot is we'll start to, to adjust those things for people. Yeah. Right? So let's talk a little bit about how you do that in rehab or why you might do that or focus on an eccentric or an isometric action. Yeah, I gotta tell you, I used to be an absolute hater of tempos. I think it was Charles Polkin used to be like a, a big fan of those, right? And uh, I used to absolutely think they were stupid because I couldn't lift as much weight. So I never really gave it the time, you know? I never really focused on it early on in my career. And I think I missed out a lot by doing that, to be honest. Um, what I will say from a, a rehab perspective is that when I'm trying to get someone back to any major lift, whether that's bench press, that squat, if it's any sort of pathology, shoulder impingement, labral issues in the hip, knee pain, I almost always start with some sort of tempo work and pause work when we're returning back to the main lifts. So I think it's absolutely, it's super powerful uh, from a variety of reasons, right? So if you have to slow down the motion, you just simply can't use as much load, right? A lot of these joints become load intolerant. So if we can decrease that load by slowing things down, it's really nice. The second piece is you're still getting a ton of work for your muscles mm -hmm. without as much stress on the joint. If you've ever done these sets, they, they cause incredible soreness. They're really hard, a lot of shaking. Uh, they just kind of suck. Right? They're just very, very hard. Um, so I'm almost always using them in my rehab programs, and I think they've got a lot of benefit. Yeah. yeah. And then I think, so what, you know, what we commonly see is using, using like a slower eccentric for people, right? Whether it's eccentric only or slowing down the eccentric, so we build a little bit more control in that, right? Yeah. And the second thing we see a lot is doing pause work, right? So I use pause work a lot in training so that um, a client or an athlete can spend more time in a position that usually they just hammer right in and out of, right? Yeah. So in the example of like a squat, the bottom position is usually the thing that most people have a hard time with. Yeah. Right? But they also spend the least time there of anywhere in the lift. Yeah. So it makes a lot of sense if we want to build up somebody's bottom position that I'm going to have them spend more time down there. Yeah. So if we use you for an example and you go ahead, you know, say no squat, Dan baby. squats a ton, but he's used to kind of just hammering in and out of his squat. So I'm going to say, all right, every squat, you're going to go to the bottom. We're going to take a two second pause and then you can come back out of it. But when you're down there in the two second pause, I want you to focus on keeping good ab tension, driving your knees out so they stay in line over your toes and keeping your chest nice and tall. So we come back up. Right? So it's a way now that I can spend more time in that hard position for Dan, we can hammer home some coaching cues that I want for him and he's gonna build a little bit more tolerance. Yeah. The other thing that I think is totally underrated and I've started using a lot more in my training now is actually slowing down the concentric portion. Right? Because we see people, you know, they'll slow down the eccentric, they'll do a really good job on the way down, they're in a great position, but then they fire back up in the concentric and they forget about all of those things and they lose that position. You know, yeah. so maybe they're going down in a squat and they go one, two, three, nice and slow, and then they fire themselves back up and they lost that position anyway. I'm a good example of that. So, so what I've done more, and we're probably going to do in your training too, is, is not only are we going to slow down the eccentric, but we're going to slow down the concentric too. And this is a total pain in the ass, but forces you to really be consciously thinking about where you're pushing, where your body is in space, and maintaining that good contact. Yeah, so it's awesome. You, why don't you show a couple? All right, what are we doing as a tempo here? So we're going to go three seconds down, and then three seconds on the way back up, and just do three reps of it. So you see Dan's pretty comfortable on the way down. He's in a good spot. He's basically just slowly falling to the earth. But now on the way back up, when he has to consciously think of going slow, you see that we can really focus on him being able to keep his knees out over his toes, fire straight back up through that squat. And now it's really, really hard for him to fight against wanting to shoot his hips back, right? So it's not 
something that we can load up a ton, which is great as we've talked about for you know, lowering intensity for secondary training days or for early in training phases. But also, he's gonna get a ton of work in without having to do that. Yeah. Right? What That's a lot of great information that you covered. Um, what I will say is I really want you guys to understand the importance of slowing down the eccentric and the concentric for technical purposes, yeah. right? So part of it is that when you're trying to make a change in someone's technique, it's pretty tough. And if you're a physical therapist and you're concerned that someone's technique is causing them to have pain problems, then you want to try to change that, okay? But it's very hard to break those habits, especially if you're moving fast. So one of the things that this does really well is it decreases the load. And because of that, it's much easier to maintain good positions. Plus, as you're going down slowly and up slowly, if you're, if you're doing this in front of a mirror, you can easily make those changes on the fly. It really works well. So, yeah. yeah. And I think the other thing, too, is like a lot of times I see with people, you know, when they go to change technique is when they start to have little nagging injuries or they start to get hurt, right? Because yeah. they went from doing something they've done forever, doing something that's totally new, and now all of a sudden, oh, my hip hurts when I'm doing this, or oh, my knee hurts when I do this new thing. Yeah. So by starting off with something new, maybe, but doing it with a really slow controlled tempo that's gonna be a little bit lighter and stuff, and you build a little bit more tolerance, we have a better chance of being successful as you start to load that pattern more. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, one more point that I think is super important from a prevention standpoint, right? Because we talked a little bit about rehab, we talked a little bit about uh, performance, right? Uh, the other thing is that we know that certain um, points when we're lifting are more likely to cause injury. So if you look at some of the, the medical literature we have on, let's say, Olympic weightlifting, the majority of injuries that are occurring are coming out of the hole, right? So if you catch a super heavy clean, you smash it to the bottom, come right back up again, a lot of times athletes get hurt. Usually they're not like terrible injuries, obviously, but um, it causes problems. I mean, it's a full load, you're going, and going to the end range of motion, and it's just a lot of stress on the body. So one of the ways to prepare those positions well is just to spend a little time down there. And the pause squats are absolutely phenomenal for that. You yeah. Know? Um, same thing with something like a bench press. Sometimes you see pec strain injuries, someone will come down for the bench, and as they're coming up out of the hole, all of a sudden, we'll have a strain, right? So if we're doing some pause work on the very bottom, getting prepared and used to this position, we press out from there and we have a lot of strength and capacity, I think we're more or less likely to have injuries as a result. Good. So. Love it. So we talked about eccentric focus, isometric focus, and even a concentric fo focus and how we can slow these things down to help build some tolerance and build better performance going forward. Yeah. All right. That's it, man. I don't have anything else. Good. I like it. All right. You want to send us out? All right. So if you guys enjoyed this, <laughs> uh, make sure that you like, subscribe, share this with all your friends. It helps us out a ton. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much.